Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. We're making a very simple table runner today, so it'll be quilted. And these are the two fabrics that we're going to be using. We're also having mitered corners. So this is a slightly different technique for mitered corners than I've done before. So come along and I'll show you how to make this quilted table runner with mitered corners. Okay, this is all we're going to need for our project today. As I said, this orange is going to be our backing fabric and our borders and this piece of fabric here will be the center of the table runner. We need a piece of fusible fleece as well. This is just a really lightweight fusible parlan. I'll put the measurements up on the screen shortly. I'm not sure what they are just yet. So they'll be on the screen in just a few seconds and we can get started. Now I've changed my mind and have decided to add another color to the table runner. So we're going to have the border in orange, a blue for the back and the floral for the front. Let's take our border fabric first. I've got two pieces that are 10 by 112 centimeters or 4 by 44 inches and then I have another two pieces that are 10 by 40 centimeters or 4 by 16 inches. So we want two of that and two of the longer ones. Now let's grab one of these longer pieces. Now whilst I'm showing you how to do this, you'll be able to do this with any size border that you want to make and also width the fabric that you want as well. So whatever your distance is across here, and I'm going to work in inches just for this video today, but it's easier than having to go back and forth between centimeters and inches. So this piece of fabric is four inches wide. Half of that obviously is two inches. So whether you're using a six inch piece of fabric or a 10 inch piece of fabric, find that half measurement. So I've lined up my two inch line along the edge of the fabric and I'm just marking that half measurement of the fabric width. So we've got four inches across here, that's two inches across here. From there we're again going to find that half measurement and to make sure your lines are nice and straight, I've got this line here lined up with a straight line I've done and I've also got my marking on the straight edge of my fabric. So I've got two squares marked out here that are two inches each across my four inch piece of fabric. So like I said, if this was a 10 inch piece of fabric, you would mark five inches and five inches across. So that's all you need to know when it comes to measurements for these mitered corners. From here, we're going to mark a diagonal line from the outside corner in, and we'll go from here out. Then we're going to take another piece of fabric and lay that directly underneath. So this one here is my really long piece, the 44 inches. We'll grab the one that is 16 inches or 40 centimeters and we'll place that right sides together with your marked fabric on top and line up that fabric so that it's nice and even on both sides. Then we'll go to the machine and so from this corner up to this one and then from that corner down to here. When I come to this corner here, you don't want to go any further. You want to go exactly to that two inch line. So we'll stitch up here. I usually like to do a back stitch and then forward again and then go forward, back and forward just to help secure those little points there and then back stitch at the beginning and the end. So we're going to do that for a long and short piece for each of these two fabrics. So I'll show you again with my fabric being four inches, I'll mark half that distance, then I'll mark half that distance again, and then a couple of diagonal lines. And then we'll take both sets of these to the machine and sew across there. Okay, I have one long and one short edge with right sides together. And I'll start sewing from the outside corner. And when I get to the point, I'll back stitch one stitch and then go forward. And I'm just going to go forward a half a stitch. I wasn't quite on the point. And then I go forward one, back one, and all the way to the end. Okay. 
and I will repeat that for the other side. So I've got the next long piece and short piece. I'll place one over the top of the other and repeat. Right, so we've got one long piece and a short piece attached and it looks really weird along here. And we've got the same thing happening on these other two pieces. Before we join everything together, I'm going to show you how this will look. Grab your scissors. We're going to cut about a quarter of an inch from the stitching line. And then we're going to cut into that point, but you don't want to cut through the stitching. Let's just fold this in half quickly. We'll press this shortly. What you can do now is open that out, fold these edges in half, and there you've got your mitered corner. Okay, we're going to press everything later, uh, but this is how it's going to look. So we've joined our two pieces back to back. When you open it out, fold the edges out so we want the raw edges to the outside then you have a really nice mitered corner so that's what we're going to do with the other two ends that we need to now close up with the other joined piece of fabric this is a short piece here grab the long end place that over the top we'll sew that triangle and we'll close up the other side as well so I'll grab this is the short end uh, now you don't want to twist this now either so let's have everything sitting nice and flat so we've got both our pieces of fabric nice and flat and then we'll take the long piece place that over the top I've just chosen the long piece because that's the one that I happen to put my markings onto and we can lay that together and we'll sew that as well and just double check again that you have everything faced the right way so that you don't have twists let's go sew those two ends up Now we can cut all of these triangles out, clip into the point. Let's grab the iron and we can press all of these edges, fold that in half all the way around. When we press these mitres, it's up to you if you want to press your seams open on both sides or if you want to have them uh, going in opposing directions and it's just as easy to do that so I'll have my seams going one way on this side and obviously this one here will have to go in the other direction then that way they will lock in nicely and it gives you the same amount of thickness on either side it just means you don't have to fiddle around with these small seams Let's start folding this. I'll press up to the corner and I'll train my seams to go in the opposite direction from one another. So that's sitting nice and flat and you've got a nice corner there. I'm going to do that for all of my corners first, then I can go and press everything in half. So 
So I've got all four corners pressed really well before I press the rest. And I've made sure that my seams are going in opposite directions here. So if I open this out here, this seam here goes toward my left. This one here will go toward my right. Those stitching lines will overlap each other. If you try to wiggle that, they lock in place. It's a really good way of managing your seams and the bulk. You can see the really nice corners in here. It'll help your quilt or your table runner to look nice and square. Now that we've done that, we can go and finish pressing the rest of the strip. And we can do the long edges as well. All right, what we've got here now is a completely framed piece of fabric. So if I bring that around, we, we now have a really nice frame for whatever quilt or table runner or placement you might be wanting to do. So everything's lined up nicely and it's nice and square. Now that we've got this done, we can work out what size we need our fabric. So I've intentionally not known what fabric I wanted. I wanted to work around the size of the actual frame. That means that when you're doing this yourself, if you wanted something a little bit narrower like this, or you wanted to have something more square, you could work that out according to the sizes of fabric that you've got in your strips. When you finish these corners, whatever you've initially cut your fabric out at in length, that's how wide your um, framed piece is going to be. So this was 16 inches in length. That's how wide that piece of fabric is. This side here was 44 inches in length, and that's how long it is. I'm going to cut those both out at the same size. And I've also got to cut out my fusible fleece and we've got to put all the layers together and quilt it. I'm going to cut my fabric out a little bit bigger then that way I can quilt it because it'll bring the fabric in and distort some of it and once it's been quilted then I can square it up to the size of my uh, mitered strips. I'm going to cut both pieces of fabric and my fleece out at 17 inches which is about 43 centimetres and the full width of the fabric as well. So I'll work again with that 44 inches. It will be just slightly longer and I will leave my salvages on because that way I can quilt through the whole lot and trim that back later. Okay, so I've cut my fabric out. So it's one for the back and one for the front. My fusible fleece, uh, which is the parlan, you can see that that's a little bit wider than my fabric. I just rough cut it. I'll go and fuse that to the top section of my fabric now. Now that I have uh, the upper fabric and my parlan fused together, I'm going to mark some lines for quilting. So if you're a quilter, you can go and do this any way you like. But basically what we need to do is sandwich three layers together so that they don't shift. In order to do that, I'm just going to make some 45 degree angled lines. And on this ruler here, there's a 45 degree angle line which I'm going to line up just on any straight edge of my fabric. So even though this is going to be cut later, it'll do. So I've got my 45 degree line here, and from there I can mark my first line. All I'm going to do is diagonal cross hatching. So I have my first line marked, and then I've just got to decide how far apart I want my quilting to be. I don't think I need to have it too close because it'll take too long and I'm way too impatient. So I think for the size of this table runner it's not very big. Three inch marks will be more than enough. So with this line here I'll now take the three inch line on my ruler and line that up with that line I've drawn. So I've lined up the top of the ruler here with the edge of the fabric and the line that I've marked and the other end of the ruler is over here. So sometimes the ruler is just not long enough and you've just got to shift it down. So I mark my next line and then I can do that all the way across the entire width of the fabric and then come back and do the other side. So now I'll use this line as my guide 
and I'll mark three inches all the way. Now that I have all the lines marked on the diagonal in one direction, I need to do it in the opposite direction as well. So what I can do this time is use any straight line on my ruler. So I've lined it up on any one of these straight lines and that will also give me the 45 degree mark I need. With that line marked, I can now use that as my reference point for the rest of the lines. So we'll do exactly the same, measure three inches from that reference line and we can mark the entire sheet of fabric. With all the lines marked on the top of our fabric, we can now flip this over and place our backing fabric to the back. Place your upper fabric face down and then take your backing fabric and line that up in line with your fabric and just smooth that out so that you don't have any creases or ripples and that it lines up with your top fabric. Once you're happy with how smooth that is then we can flip this back around to the front and we can pin these layers together and start quilting. If you can get a hold of curved safety pins, they make the job of sandwiching all your layers together much easier because the curve sits inside the fabric and keeps your fabric nice and flat. And when you place these pins in your work, you want to try and keep it away from any stitching lines. So we've got our lines marked around here. They're our stitching lines and I'll just place a pin every so often inside the squares. That way they're not in my way when I'm sewing. You can see how the curve in the pin helps keep that fabric nice and flat. I'll pin all of this together and then we can quilt it. Now that I've pinned this together I'm ready to take it over to the machine and quilt all of those lines. The thread I'm going to be using for quilting today is a sulky thread. It's variegated so I just thought that would be a nice touch to the um, quilting and I received this from Elsa some months back. She'd sent me a few different reels and I've been wanting to actually use this in something a little bit nicer. So I'm using a variegated thread for my quilting and I'm using that in my bobbin as well. The needle size I'm using is a 90 or 14 and I've increased my stitch length to the maximum that it will go to on my machine which is about six millimeters. When I quilt I like to start in the center of my project that way I can smooth my fabric outward if needed. So I'll start with any one of those lines around the center. You don't have to worry about back stitching at the beginning and the end. This machine will automatically do it though but you don't need to worry about it. And the reason I'm using a really long stitch length is to help prevent the fabric layers from pushing against each other and also to make the job go a lot quicker. And if you have a walking foot it would be really good to use that now too. I don't have one for this machine. Once I've finished one row, I'll go along to the next line that I've marked, repeat that for all of the lines in this direction, then I'll turn it around and do the lines on the other side, then we'll do the ones on the opposite angle. So I've done all the lines on this side now and I've just turned the quilt around and we're going the other direction. All right, I finished all the lines in one direction. I can turn this around now and do the lines going on the opposite angle. Okay, the quilting has been finished throughout the entire runner 
it looks really nice with that variegated blue thread on top and bottom. Now we need to decide which side of the table runner we want our mitered corners or bindings to be seen from. What I've done is place this directly over the top of the quilted fabric. This is how our product is going to look when we finish. Obviously there'll be no raw edges anywhere. If I choose to have this border on the front where all the flowers are, then this is how it's going to look. And I actually think that this is a little bit too busy. So what I'm thinking is that I would prefer to have this border showing on the back. Let's have a look. To my mind, I think this looks much better. The colours complement each other better than this does on this side. What are your thoughts? Obviously, by the time you're watching this, I'll have already made a decision. But I'm pretty certain that I like this combination much better than this combination. I probably should have picked a blue for my border if I wanted to have that on the front of this fabric. We'll scrap the original idea. I want my border showing on this side. What that means is that this needs to be attached from the other side of the fabric. Let's bring that back around. Now I'm not going to cut this to size just yet. I want to make sure my borders fit. I also think it'll be easier to cut everything off uh, once all the layers are sewn together. I will line this up along the edge of the fabric here. Doesn't matter that it's not necessarily straight. These fabric pieces here are straight. So we'll line all of this up and before I pin it, I will make sure I've got the same distance apart along the center here. That'll help make it look a lot more square. The other thing I'm going to do is use the little intersections of my cross hatching as another guide just to help me keep the quilting lines lined up as well. It's not something that you have to do, but I think it'll actually make it look a little bit nicer. Then I can also use that as a reference point. I'm going to clip this long edge together first because I've got them nicely lined up with my cross hatching. So I've squared up one long edge here. That's all been clipped together. And before I do the other edges, I just want to square up this corner as well. And I'm just going to line up the straight edge here with the straight edge of the fabric and then manipulate this so that this edge is nice and straight. And just by sheer coincidence, this is actually going to work perfectly for me. Couldn't have planned that better if I tried. So I've got the straight edge lined up here, line up the straight edge of the border here, and then I'm going to line up this edge and this edge so that I can get this long strip lined up. Now all I need to do is move my ruler along and make sure I've got the same distance on this side to this side. If you don't have one of these, you just get a tape measure and measure that distance all the way along. And then when you get to the other end, you want to line up the straight edges along here and just manipulate the edge here so that sits along the edge of your ruler. Now we should have a really nicely squared up table runner. What we're going to do now is go to the machine and sew all the way around the edge and we're stitching through the layer of the border and the layers of fabric and our parlin. I don't have a particular size measurement that I need for the outside edge uh, for stitching this in place, but I am going to use the edge of my foot and run that along the very edge of this orange piece of fabric that will keep me sewing nice and straight and that's enough of a seam allowance that I need.
then just overlap the stitching when you get to the beginning. Now that we've sewn our border on all the way, we can trim this back. I'll line up the straight edge of my ruler with the straight edge of the orange border here and just trim that right back to the edge of the orange. And I'll do that all the way around. I'll keep this line here straight with the line I've got on the border as well. Okay, so that's all been squared up and I'm ready now to turn this border around to the other side so that we have the orange sitting on this side. I have made a slight mistake and I'll show you what that is. When I've sewn the fabric in place, I haven't taken into account the salvages because I left those on. My fabric wasn't quite long enough without them. When I've sewn the border piece down, I've just left a narrow seam here. But what I'm going to do now is to cover this up because this needs to be turned around to the other side. To cover that I'm going to sew around the entire border until that fabric when it's turned covers the edge of the selvage. So I'll quickly go and do that now. It's just another row of stitching. All it's going to do is make the border when it's finished slightly narrower. There's enough of a border in there that I can afford to do that. That's how I'm going to fix up that little mistake. Uh, I'll be right back. So now that I've re-stitched that, I've got two choices. I can cut this edge of the fabric back to the old stitching line, but it really doesn't matter when I fold this over. It's just going to give me a little bit of a thicker seam underneath, and I don't think that's going to hurt. So if you want to, you can cut off the outside edge. I'm not going to worry, but what I will do is trim the corners. On the final row of stitching I'm going to just trim that close to the corner there and that will enable me to turn this fabric around and have nice corners. So I'll do that on the other ones. And once you've done that turn your fabric to the other side and we can poke that corner out and you can bring this border around to the other side and then clip or pin it all together. Before I do that, I'm going to just get the iron and press the border away from this side of the fabric. I'll do that all the way around. And once you've done that, you can turn everything to the other side and then line up the edge of the fabric so that your orange border sits only on one side and that's how it's going to look on the other side. And then we can go around and fold all the edges over all the way around the entire quilt. All right, I've clipped the edges together. Well, now all that's left to do to finish this up is sew around the edges here. It's up to you if you want to go and top stitch around the outside edge. I haven't decided yet if I will do that, but I'm going to go and sew this in place and on the other side you won't see that border at all. I think a piping around the edge would look amazing. What I should have done, and, and I have only just thought about it, was whilst attaching this, I could have added a piece of piping around the entire perimeter wrapped in some bias binding. That would have looked really nice on the edge. That would have made this side a lot less bland because it would have a nice feature on the edge and we'd also still have something nice on the edge along here too. Wish I had a thought of that earlier. Let's take this to the machine now and sew that. All right, let's finish this up. Thank you. 
You know, now that I've finished this, I'm not so sure I did the right thing. I'm wondering if perhaps I should have put this border on the other side because the other side's really boring. Look! <laughs> I mean, the fabric's nice. I like the sunflowers. There's just nothing exciting about it. Something I've come up with that might make it look a little bit less boring is to put some braid around the edge here where the orange has been stitched in place. And I would love to use this, but I don't have enough. If you end up making this and you find it's just a little bit too boring, then perhaps you could decorate it with a little piece of braid. Sadly, I just don't have anything here that I can use at all. I don't even have ribbon that's going to match. In hindsight, I wish I had have done a piping around the edge. That would have broken that up a little bit more. Tell me what you think. Do you think it needs something? What would you do? Leave it? Put something else on there? Not sure. I don't mind this side. Probably not going to go with anything in the house, but we'll have a look and see. Well, I'm not really sure how I feel about this project. I'm happy with the technique. I'm happy with the mitered corners because the whole aim really in this video was to show you how to do mitered corners another way. I'm not really sure what I think about this. It's really just the colours that are doing my head in. It bothers me that what was going to be the top of a table runner is uh, really just extremely plain. I've got to come up with a solution for that. I'm happy with the border. The mitering has turned out really well. It's easy enough to do. Uh, I do like the fact that you can just sandwich two pieces together, sew your triangle, and then once you've folded it, it's turned into a nice corner here. So I really enjoy that technique. I should probably try things out before I present them to you. But you know me, I like to surprise myself. <laughs> um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. My colour choices may not be the best. And I know a lot of you are going to tell me not to be too hard on myself. I'm really not putting myself down. Just that sometimes things don't really excite me. And I think this is one of those things. If you've got an exciting idea for the other side, let me know. I think I need some excitement. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now. So it doesn't really look too bad on the coffee table. Let's have a look at the other side. And as plain as this side is, it's not too bad against the timber. It might even look nice with a piece of lace underneath it. Bye for now.